Hi guys, welcome to C Sharp Full Course in 10 Days Using W3 Schools. My name is Dr. Shan and today on day number 8, we're going to learn how we use C Sharp's looping statements. Again, using W3 Schools website as a reference web. So uh, this is my channel, Learn with W3 Schools. If you still haven't subscribed, please do that. Um, in last class, we did talk about uh, the while loops and we talked about switch if else statements. Uh, sorry, and then in this session, we're going to go more into while loops and for loop and these things. Okay, and then we're going to do various different examples to solve and understand how each of these loops work. So we'll try to solve, do a couple of programs, try to solve as many code as we can and get different kind of outputs and get different kind of uh, behavioral logic that we can develop. So this is going to be quite a long session. So bear with me because loops are quite important. So I'll try to explain them extensively as much as I can in this session. Okay, uh, before we go further, again, quick disclaimer, this is not an official W3 Schools tutorial. I'm just using it as a reference maps website so that you can follow along with me on these notes and use this wonderful website for your reference material. Okay, um, again, um, just like every other tutorial, I will just say that before um, anything else, please do subscribe again. And if you like this video, if you like being following me, don't forget to like this video. Um, Leave a comment. Let me know what you liked and what you didn't like, which other topics you want to know, any other examples you specifically want to know. Uh, your likes and subscription and comments do help the channel and it will help us encourage a lot to make these kind of tutorials regularly. And that's all we are asking for you. If you're watching it, liking it, hit that like button, leave a good comment. It just becomes a positive vibe and motivation for future videos. Okay, so let's begin. So now let's talk about while loops. Okay, what exactly, first of all, loops are? Loops can be execute a block of code as long as a specified condition is reached. Simple terms of speaking, looping statements are statements that repeat themselves continuously and they will execute the block continuously in a loop until a specific condition is reached and the condition becomes false. Unlike if else statements, if the condition is true, the block of code is executed one time. However, in the loops, if the block of uh, if the condition becomes true, the block is executed multiple times until this condition becomes false. Let me explain how this works. So loops basically are very handy way uh, as they save the time, reduce errors, and make code more readable. Okay? That's why we use it. It's it's a huge help in programming. Almost every programming language you would come across, if else and looping statements, it's, it's like there they must be there. Okay, so we start with something called a while loop. What do we mean by while loop? Well, while loop is a syntax. It starts with a while and bracket star, bracket close, and within it we write a condition. Okay, it loops through a block of code. So this now means that whenever we write a while statement instead of if else, while statement will mean that we again have a condition similar to if structure. However, once the condition is true, the block is executed and it loops back to the condition. So the control from this block goes back to the condition and it again checks the condition. If the condition again is true, again the block is code is executed and control goes back again to the condition. Again, it checks the condition. If condition is true, the block is executed, again it goes. So this cycle is known as a looping statements or a loop. This will continue to happen until this condition becomes false. So that means once this is false, then it will break out. If else, only check the condition once stay time. If the condition is true, they execute the block of code and move out. That's the main difference between if else and while loop. They execute the block one time if the condition is true. Whereas while or for or do while, they are looping statements. They basically will execute the loop continuously until a specific condition is met and this condition becomes false. So another technical part to remember here is that now we need to ensure that at a given time, this condition becomes false. Okay, So this is something that we have to worry about. That no matter what, at a given time, this condition should go or and become false. Otherwise, it will create a problem. Okay. Otherwise, it will be called as a loop. It will be continuous loop or an infinite loop. Or sometimes we call it do, uh, loop of doom. Means it will continue to exit forever and ever, ever, and ever, never execute, never stop. I will show you in a moment how we can do that. Anyway, in an example below, the code in the loop will run over and over again as long as the value of i is less than 5. So what we do now is, this is a practical example. So if I check the code again, we now have using system 
Again, we have been doing that namespace my application. This is what W3 Schools is using class program. So they use all the classes with the program name. We have a static void main string arguments integer i is equals to zero. So now first we declare a variable. Okay, um, variable declaration is not important, but somehow it is needed. So it becomes a part of loops in one way or another. Okay, um, so integer i is equals to zero. So we initially declare a variable. Okay, then we say while the value of i is less than five. So see this, it becomes a part of a loop because we're going to use this variable's value to iterate through these statements and loop through the statements. So we say that, hey, is the value of i, which is zero, less than five? So condition becomes true. And it comes here, console.write line, it prints the value of i and we get the value of i. Then it goes and does the increment. Why this increment is done here? First of all, this increment represents the statements like i is equals to i plus 1. Oops, sorry, what's happening? i plus 1. This means take the current value of i, so current value is 0, add 1 to it, so it becomes 1 and then our assign it back to the value of i. So now value of i is replaced to 1 after this simple addition. So this is a shorthand operator we have already talked about this. So we did this increment. We changed the value of i by 1. Why we need to do that? Again as I said we need to ensure that at a certain point this condition becomes false. After a certain number of times when the looping statements have executed this loop statement must end and in order to end it we started with the value of i we use this y value in a condition and then we increment or gradually change the value of i depending on what your logic is. You can increment it by 2 or by 3 or making sure that when we reach a certain point or certain number is reached this value it becomes that number and we can have that condition. So at any given point we need to ensure that if something is changing so that this condition can at a one point be false and the loop will execute. So this will currently execute up till 4. The moment i becomes 5 and because we have less than condition, so i, if it's 5, less than 5, this becomes false, the looping statement executes, stops. So this is what simply a loop statement does, okay. If we don't do that, for example, if I don't write it, okay, and I run the code. Now what will happen, that it, i value is 0, condition becomes true, i is less than 5, condition becomes true, console.royalen, it will print the value of i. Next, because there is no increment. Okay, the value of i is not changing. It will come back here, check the condition, value of i is still 0, less than 5, true, again print it. Value, then again it will loop around i is 0 because we have not done any increment or any change. It will do less than 5 and it will execute this statement and this will continue to happen and happen and happen. So until this condition is true, becomes false, you would find that this becomes a, what we call an infinite loop, a loop that runs forever. Okay, and that's the most dangerous thing because that will crash your system, that will create problems in the system, that will hang your system because this program is now continuously generating trillions of numbers and at one point your memory will be so full that your system will crash. So we need to ensure that we need to stop this code and we close this window in this case. Okay. The second way of doing is, uh, other thing we can do is because while again requires a condition. While loop, same goes for do while and for they require something called a condition. And the same thing that we discussed in if else statements, condition means actually they need a Boolean value. So I can write true here as well. This will also work fine because they don't need the expression, they need the condition Boolean value. So if the value or reply becomes true, the block will execute. If it becomes false, the block will not execute. So if I write false here and I'm not going to use true again, this is going to crash the system. I don't want to do that. So it becomes false, we'll also run the code, but this time there shall not be any output because integer i is equal to 0, while it has a false value, it will just come out. Okay. You can set it to true as well, again no output, you can set it to true as well, this means it will run forever. But we don't want that as well, because we want to ensure that the loop terminates at a certain point. That is why i becomes technically part of this loop, then there is a condition here which we say, hey, um, <clears throat> i is for example less than equal to 20. Okay, and then we do the increment. Now again, this plus plus is not necessary. For example, if I just comment this one out, I can do something like this. Um, I is equals to plus two. Okay, we can write another shortened operator, which is equivalent to I is equals to I plus two. Okay, so uh, I can write this as well. So in maybe my system requires me to do an increment of two. So I can run this code and check the condition. So I said, hey, start from zero, check the condition, 
if this is true, print the statement on the console, then in do the increment of 2. Okay, so take the current value of i and do the increment of 2. So it will do that increment of 2 and hang on. Why there's i to 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 why there's an infinite loop? I plus is equals to 2 should add. Hang on, this is a nice interesting thing. It's supposed to be plus or equal to 2. Ah, okay, sorry, my bad. I did a mistake. It's not equal to plus, it's actually plus equal to. Okay, so plus comes first, equal to is there because the normal syntax is i is equal to then i plus 1. So when I write i equal to, the system is assuming that we are doing here, and then when plus 2 means it assumes that you're just adding to the value of i, but then the next time it doesn't know what to do. So it's just taking the fresh value of i. And somehow it's messed up, so it just went on an infinite loop. So see, even a small logical condition can make or break your code, or just misplace of sign. So be very careful of that. So I misplaced that sign. Well, one thing else we found out, so actually the signature is supposed to be plus equal to. So don't use this, control X, we use this, okay. Uh, this will generate infinite loop, okay. Error at this point, E double R O R error. So again, now we had less than 20 and because we use plus equal to 2 this means take the current value of i add 2 to it and assign back to i <coughs> now this is appropriate so now you see we have increment of 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 as well so it's not necessary that you always use plus 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 you can even though for example have this as well uh, i can do as uh, again another comment and i can say take the value of i and then for example equals to i plus uh, 3 or uh, I multiply by 3, okay. This can also work for me. So if I run the code now, it will go, take the current value of y, multiply it with 3, assign back to y, and the loop will execute, okay. So now it says another error. Okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, expected semicolon. So we missed out the semicolon. We come back here, hit a run. i is equals to 0. Oh. Okay, so now see what happened. Beautiful thing. Okay, uh, something again, another logical mistake. Today my head is not in the game. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking the i's current value, which is actually zero. Uh -huh. So we're saying zero multiply by three, the answer becomes zero. Okay, so now what's happening is because i's value is zero, the condition becomes true and come back here again because i is still zero multiply by 3 so 0 multiplied by 3 becomes 0 so the value actually is always 0 so that's the, what is happening here right so um just give me a heart attack anyway so i guess if i just change from 0 to 1 they should solve the problem so again logically this is this is sometimes what we call a logical errors and this is why we need to be extremely careful with loops because as, if a small issue small logical error for me should be like okay i take the current value of i multiply by 3 it should be like 3 and then it should go you know and increments of 3 we could have that but problem is because the initially start value was 0 every answer multiplied by 0 becomes 0 and we end up having an infinite loop that runs forever and ever and ever and ever and ever means that every variable will be stored in memory so at one point you will end up having a memory problem do very careful with that and your system will start to slow down and you, you will crash so that's why we be very careful while using the loops as well because you can easily end up creating an infinite loop or loop of doom that can crash your system so just to avoid this we will start with one that should make sense so now one multiplied by three becomes three the value i will be three next time three multiplied by three will become nine and hopefully we should not have a major problem of infinite loop this time so we get one three nine perfect okay so then finally when there is 9 9 multiplied by 3 should become 27 so it becomes greater than this condition is false it loops out so most books will always use plus plus sign but do remember the plus plus is not always recommended oh sorry it's always used but it's not the only option okay you can use whatever multiplication plus or operation or the, the increment you need for this loop to work with okay as long as the condition is satisfied at a given point so we keep an eye on the condition we keep an eye on this initial variable and then we keep on this increment so this is in generally defined as i initialization we use this as condition 
and then we use this as uh, increment okay so these these three become the part of the loop and then whenever you write something inside this one it basically is considered as the block of loop okay uh, okay so once you understand this this is what we do in loops so do not forget to increase the variables used in the condition otherwise the loop will never end so be very very careful with that so this is how we basically use while loop don't worry um, I will be doing more exam practical examples like we have done for previously after this so we will try to do as many exercises for the while do while loops so you understand exactly what we're doing moving on further let's not talk about do while loop what do i loop means um, we will be doing same thing however the syntax is a little bit different so it is a looping statement it does exactly the same but the, here's the difference do again is a keyword reserve word so is while so do be careful you cannot use this as a variable name or method name or class name it's a reserve word keyword by uh, c sharp the, this, the difference between do while and a while loop is that the body of the code executes first before the condition is evaluated. When we talked about while loop, it checks the condition first. If the condition is true, only then the block will execute. However, this is like a reverse structure. So initially the code of the body is executed, then the condition is evaluated. And if the condition is true, it loops around. So what happens in this scenario is that no matter what, the loop will always execute for at least one time. So even if I set it to false, okay, if I run the code. So now what it does is it comes here, it initializes the variable, it does says do block of code and then checks the condition while again brackets and with ends with a semicolon. So now this is the very key thing that we, we usually forget. You need a semicolon at the end of the while because there is nothing after the while. There is a block. So if something is continuously referring to some block of code, there's always curly brackets, curly brackets. And so once we use a curly bracket that indicates a block, there's no need for semicolon here. <coughs> However, this time the while doesn't have a block. So it needs to have a semicolon to end it. Now, even though when we wrote the condition false, we still get an output zero. Why is that? Because the do again executes the block first time before anything. So first it will execute the block, then it will check the conditions. Even if the condition is false, if this is this false, it will exit. But it has already executed the block of code. So no matter what, even if you write a direct false, the body will still be executing for one time. However, this is not the case with the uh, while statement. So if you are right false here, we all know we did this example earlier, this will not execute any output because the condition is false. It says, hey, listen, I'm false. I don't need to do anything. And this is expected semicolon because again, I have a full stop here. So, um, so it says false, I will not execute because it's false. But um, do while are reverse loops. They, they will be repeating the statements. The logic goes the same. We have a variable we initialize. We have a block of code, we have an increment statement, and then we have the condition statement. So this is like a little reverse, but the concept is same. It will repeat, 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 but the structure is a little bit different. We write the word do first, we start the block, end the block, and whatever statements needs to be inside the loop, we write here, and then we write the while condition after the block has closed, bracket start, and we provide a condition, which can be any expression that we basically use. So in this case, it can be, i is less than 5 same thing so if you run the code it will go and run the code so if you are executing it multiple times you might not feel the difference at all because again the same output can be generated for with the while loop so usually that's why we end up using while loop more often or the for loop the third one however at certain situations we need some code to execute first like you know like in the game or in situations where we are doing multiple attempts or playing anything where at least the loop needs to execute once before it can re-execute multiple times. Understand? So that is why we say we need to use in those situations a do while loop. So the example where the loop will always be executed at least once. Even if the condition is false, it will execute. Do not forget to increase the variable condition. That's the key thing that we want to ensure that make sure you do not uh, forget to change this variable and value otherwise again you will end up with the infinite loop that never ends okay now so let's talk about c sharp 
for loops. Now, similar to while and do while, for loop also does exactly the same. It loops around multiple statements. Okay. And similarly, it will loop until a certain condition is satisfied. So for loop again behaves exactly same of as the while loop or do while loop. Um, however, there's a difference in syntax. And then that's the only key difference, in other words, between these looping statements. So for example, for the for loop, as name suggests, we use the for word. Again, the for word is a keyword in the reserve word. So you cannot use this as a variable name, class name, or a method name. However, now you note that the syntax is quite different. Okay, so it's a straight, the, um, the syntax basically says that in the first part, uh, you need statement one, then semicolon, then there's a second part containing second statement, again a semicolon, and there's a third part containing statement three. Now, as compared to previous while loops, we only had a condition. We wrote explicitly that you can write a condition here. However, for the for loop, instead of word condition, they have written the word statement, and there's a very good reason for that. And the syntax is basically divided into three parts. Instead of just writing a condition, it contains now three statements having separated by a semicolon, which is again quite important because this means that this is independently a complete Java uh, C sharp statement. Similarly, statement two again behaves like a complete independent statement. And then there's a statement three, which again behaves like a complete independent statement. However, there's no semicolon at the end because there's an end of bracket, which indicate, identifies this as a loop ends here. So this is a specific syntax, okay? Statement one, statement two, statement three, or part one, part two, part three. Now, this behaves in a very specific manner. I will talk about this with this example. So when we write for loop, note the three statements that we've written. Be mindful that this is not the actual, or this is not the, what we call exact thing, okay? Exact thing means that um, this is not what always is the same scenario, okay? So for example, the second part is a conditional statement here. In while loops, we specifically mention that you need to have a conditional statement here, which requires true and false. However, for for loop, they said, hey, you need a statement here. This is statement typically 90%, 99%, in fact, we write as a conditional statement, but you can write any other legal C sharp statement here as well. Similarly, you can write any other legal C statement, means you can even write console.write within these lines and it would work fine. Okay, so how does this system work? So for example, if I come back here and if we execute the code, you will see that it loops around, prints everything fine. The difference is that this time or 99% of time you would use for loop with this particular syntax, 99. Now 1% people change it, it depends on them. However, the 99% people target this and we try to focus on the same structure. So the statement one or the first part basically involves something called initialization. So we initialize the variable inside the for loop instead of before the loop. Then we have a conditional statement. Then we have an increment statement. So the initializing, in condition and increment all written inside a for loop. That's the major difference here. If I were to write the same thing with the while loop, you would note that we would initialize integer, for example, w is equals to zero. Initialize a variable before it. We would wrote a while loop and we will say w is less than equal to, for example, 10. We write a condition, we start a block, and then we print some statement called console.write line. And then for example, W is printed here, semicolon ends here, and typically we do the increment here. So this becomes a statement of, or the syntax of a while loop. We have initialization, we have a condition, and then we have a block of code, and somewhere before or after, depending what your logic is, we have an initial increment operator. So all are actually written as a three separate ways, in three separate lines, in other words. For for loop, all are written inside the parentheses of for loop body. That's the, that's the major difference, that's the only difference. Now, as long as this condition is true, this second part usually requires either true or false. So as long as this part is true, this statement will execute. Once this becomes false, the block will like add. Same as while, same as do while. Okay. So this initialization is done, but now if it is supposed to repeat, how many times is going to repeat this? How many times is going to repeat this? How many times repeat this? That's the key thing that we need to understand. So if you come here and let me write a comment and we say steric backslash remember the line comment, it works with this way. So first part, uh, I statement one, S-T-A-T-E statement one or I-N-I-T-I-L-I initialization part um, is executes one time. 
only which is actually first time then we have second statement state statement 2 which usually is condition this is again every time okay until false so that makes sense so it checks for uh, it checks for the condition every time the loop it rates it will re-execute this line of code then the third is e -ex execute the block if condition is true so now this is a different thing what happened to an increment so increment doesn't get executed until the fourth step so now statement four or statement three increment uh, increment increment okay this is what happens do the increment and then step number five if i put it down basically says that rep -E -E -E, repeat step two so this is the basic life cycle of a for loop statement one which is the first statement initialization part executes first time and one time only so first time when the loop executes for the very first time it executes the first part okay the first part is executed and that's the only time it gets executed then it checks the condition if the condition is true then it executes the block of code in its third step so the third step means that it execute the block of code okay so whatever we have written inside the block will be executed the increment will not execute this time once the block of code is completed it the iteration goes back to the for loop but this time it executes the increment statement 3 now it executes the statement and then once ex statement is executed repeat step 2 which means go to the step number 2 statement number 2 is check condition so after increment it checks the condition this is how a for loop typically works so the increment is in fact done at the last time not at the first and that is why typically if you even see a while loop we write the increment after the statements have been written just to match up the logic okay so however we can write this before it it depends on what logic you want but the typical loop logic is the increment is to be done later on so here in, in integer i is executed first and only one time that's it semicolon means statement ended check the condition if the condition is true execute the block of code the code gets executed once it is executed then it goes back and this time it again does the increment so the increment is done as a fourth step once increment is done then it goes to this point statement checks the condition if condition is true it executes the block then again it goes back does the increment so this is how it basically cycles and it completely ignores the first part after the first execution okay so looping again does the loop but this is how the syntax typically works so this is what we need to understand this is what it's trying to say statement one executed once two defines the condition three executed every time after the block has been executed so after the block has been executed okay so this means that once the block has been executed now the statement three part will execute so in this case statement one sets a variable before the loop statement two defines a condition for the loop and if the condition is true it executes the block then it does the statement three increment and after that again it checks the condition and goes for it since we now said okay remember now basically if you understand this the why we use the word statement here statement here statement here means any legal statement can be written here so for example you can come here and you can say hey initialize a variable i is equals to 0 i is less than equals to 10 okay so instead of increment now we can write i is equals to i plus 2 or shortened operator that would works fine because it needs a legal statement this is also completely fine as long as it changes a variable which satisfies and make sure that at one point this condition becomes false okay so this loop basically works in this manner similarly if i come here uh, let me give you one more example if i copy this code control c and if i let me just move it here if i if i want i can write console dot write line here okay and i can say i n i t i l i initialize and instead of integer i can write for example integer x is equals to one 
here and then this condition can become x is less than 5 and let me do the increment x plus plus okay if you declare two variables of the same name again it will complain so do make sure that if you are working the two variables there cannot be two variables with the same name so that's what uh, it basically needs so if i again go for x here and if i run the code now okay so it will now uh, this will be a completely independent loop this will be independent loop and this is an independent loop now what's happening is we print a word initialize and it's only printed one time why because this statement has been executed four times after that initialization we have done separately in place of initialization we have written another legal statement within c sharp so any statement that you can write anywhere else actually can go inside here no problem with that so console.writeln initialize basically means that we have written a statement inside the block of a for loop but because there's a semicolon and it needs a statement this is completely valid hence we have a condition statement it checks a condition and we can write same thing here as well so if i want i can come here control c uh, let's be a little lazy control v but making sure there is no semicolon at the end okay so this semicolon is now not needed because the block is closing here so if i have check now if i execute the code this will ensure that this statement also gets executed but now where is the increment we need that increment right so we can do this increment here plus equals to two what this will basically allow us to do is it will increment change the value of x until this condition for example is satisfied and it will run the code so now if i execute it see we have initialize 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 okay why this multiple initialize because of this okay let's just change this word i n c r e increment uh, or what we can say statement three right s t a t e statement three this can be statement or initialize as it is so now if i run the code to make a little bit more sense so we have initialized so this part gets executed only one time and this is a valid statement sometimes we ask this in interview questions as an exam questions and midterm questions if you are giving online tests or certifications this kind of thing pop up what is the output of this code okay so sometimes we confuse hey it's supposed to be initialization as i said 99 percent time we do that but that doesn't mean that that's the only way for with a for loop you need a statement and that statement actually can be any statement that's why this statement is also legally allowed can can be written here and to make things more easy we always try to do initialize and this part always gets executed one time however condition is there and then the second part again needs a legal statement so i can write any legal statement here as well okay so i can write any legal statement here and i can say go here so see statement three statement three statement three statement three statement three statement three perfect no problem with that if i want i can say uh, plus x meaning that print the value of x so it, since this is a legal statement this would also work fine and it will change the value of this as a value of x same as this one so this also is what we refer to in terms of um, for statements now let's talk more about something called nested for loops okay a nested for loop nested while loop nested do while loop all have the same concept okay um, again the, all three loops basically have the same purpose it's the syntax wise the differ is and how we write them 99% you again will always encounter for loop of being with the same syntax but do keep in mind you can write any other legal statement here now what do we mean by nested loop a nested loop means a loop inside a loop so we have a loop of body which we call outer loop for example and then in within that loop we have an outer loop and why is it important to understand it's similar to if else if okay so where we write multiple else if statements so if else then again within that else we have if else then within that else we have else if. so it creates a nested structure something inside the structure same thing goes here we have an outer loop for outer and then we have something called for inner loop how do these two differ or how is the logic here so as we execute the outer loop okay if you now note how nested loops are working that's the key thing to understand is for every single time an outer loop executes so if outer loop executes one time the inner loop will complete all its internal cycles so if an outer loop is supposed to execute for example one time and the inner loop is supposed to execute three times you will note that one time the outer loop executes the inner loop executes for three times then once it completes its cycle the control goes back to the outer loop 
and the outer loop executes for the second time and the inner loop will again start fresh because now it assumes that the loop is re-executing. Okay, because it's re-executing, it will re-initialize the variable and it will recheck the condition and start from the one again. So hence the inner loop again gets executed from one. That's the key difference that we need to understand. So if I set this to four, and if I set this to, for example, let it be three and run the code, this means that the outer loop executes four times, but the inner loop will complete its three times cycle for each time the outer loop is executing. So inner loop executes three times when the outer loop executes first time because it's inside it. So when I integer i is equals to one, condition let it be less than four, condition becomes true. So it needs to execute this entire block, whatever is written inside the off for loop. So it prints outer loop, then it goes, hey, it's another loop. So then another loop is executed. Once this loop gets executed, it will complete its cycle. Initialize integer j is equals to one, j less than equals to three, and then it will go and print j plus plus with console.writeLNJ's value. So this loop actually executes every single time the outer loop executes. This is what happening in the nested loops. Same goes for while loop. So you can have a while loop and then inside it you can have a for loop. You can have a for loop and inside it this can be a while loop. No problem with that. So understand that, that when we use a nested loop it means that every time the outer loop executes one time the inner loop completes its all its internal cycles until the condition is satisfied. So if we set it to 5, we run the code. And so we see that outer loop executes one time. So this outer is printed here, outer 1. So means that outer loop is executed. The first time when it executes, the inner loop starts again from 1 and executes until the condition 5 is met. So it executes 5 times. Then once the condition becomes false, the loop body ends, the control goes back to the outer loop. Now it will execute for the second time. When this executes for the second time, it prints outer loop 2. Then again, because now it is coming from the bigger area outside of the box, this loop again gets initialized. So this statement will actually reinitialize. That's the key point here to understand. Because it will reinitialize, this loop will again start from 1. In this case, once the loop has started, this statement does not get executed again. But here it is re-executing because it's inside another loop. So technically it completes its cycle when the condition is false. The block of body comes out. When it comes out, it control goes back to the top. It starts to execute again and then come back here. So because it control goes outside this loop after the condition and the control goes back to the outer loop, it comes back in. Now it says, hey, I need to reinitialize this variable. That is why we say always in the loop 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in a loop 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in a loop 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in a loop 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And outer loop only 1, 2, 3, 4. This is how nested loop works. I know sometimes it becomes a little confusing. So don't worry about that. I know what we're going to do is we're going to try to do some of the exercises. So just like previously, I have set up few exercises and we will try to understand these nested loop structures with few all around 8 to 10 different exercises very quickly this time because we already have the basic understanding and we will try to generate this kind of patterns and structures using nested loops with single loops and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's begin with this, doing these exercises. So now we are back here and as discussed previously, I already have created some task lists that we want to be developing. So first program uh, we need to develop is called uh, write a program in C Sharp to display the first 10 natural numbers. Now again, this is something very simple. We have already done that, but since we are doing it, let's just create it very quickly. So first thing we will be doing is writing using, and we are gonna say, hey, I wanna use system. Then we're gonna name it namespace. And again, I'm gonna use the same namespace. Okay, block star, block close. Then we're gonna create the class name. And this is gonna be, for example, task task dash um, task underscore one remember dash is not minus the sign is not allowed so we do that then we have static we have something called void and then we use m capital main bracket star bracket close as string square brackets arg for a variable name move your cursor create a block there we go then we create integer and for example x is equals to zero semicolon then let's just use the while loop 
and then we're going to say x less than equal to 10 okay block star block close again and then we're going to use console console dot write method bracket star bracket close inverted quotations and we can say the natural number and you m number is and then we're gonna go hit plus you're gonna print x value give a semicolon that's it that's all it takes so to print any number we basically need to use this uh while loop x is equal to less than equal to 10 the condition becomes true loop it in. so now it's going to print this and then it's going to give us a range error um, in this case uh, because we are using this compiler it is giving us a range error otherwise uh, this code is okay okay the range error means that this condition is never becoming false because we did not use x plus plus hit a semicolon so in this case this one compiler online compiler gives us that this is like exceeding the buffer length and it's infinite loop going on and on and on forever and ever okay so that's what i wanted to show if you go for w3 schools compiler and if you create some kind of a, a loop it will just continue to print outputs but different compilers have a different behavior usually this one is more natural and realistic behavior this because it's online so it detects and it gives us some customized message sometimes it's quite useful as well so that's why we tend to use it anyway so this is how you basically print any number any of any given number of times so in this case i'm 10 so if i want to print 100 numbers all i need to do is just change this condition here and now if i go and hit run it will print this number 100 times obviously we have used right method here if i use right line it is going to print everything on the new line of 100 times so see we printed 100 lines just using this four lines of code okay so that's what looping allows us to do it allows us to do, uh, <coughs> print iterative statements or do iterative operations execute iterative instructions that basically are same but just are changing some parameters based based on that they make different decisions so that allows us to repeat those statements and with a very little amount of code so this completes our task number one so i'm just going to hit Control c to this go back to my word file and then this is going to be my solution oops not this one Control v oops let's just not click kill this paste text only and this is just adding so many extra lines is not supposed to anyway so i will just print output and do the formatting later on so that's task number one completed now a little bit more different task write a c-sharp program to find the sum of all the first 10 natural numbers okay so the idea is that if i take all the first 10 natural numbers and add them together now how should i generate this output okay so this basically becomes more interesting that it's not only just generating the numbers but this time we need to do some form of calculation as well okay so we say no problem let's just come back to our code okay once we are here uh, let's just generate a new version of it for example let me bring it in control a delete it again we start with the same thing so now we're going to say listen i need something called using sys system semicolon um, namespace and then i'm going to use the same namespace that i've been using block star block close inside this we will create a class and this time it's going to be task underscore two you can name it whatever you want but as i said i'm just going to use this static void main string a um, square brackets for array arg block star block close so we have this basic code available to us now the idea is again that we need to have an integer and we're going to use this integer for our uh, for example the looping purpose so we can say integer x can be there and then comma we're going to create something called integer sum is equals to zero semicolon now what this means is that we declare variable uh, both as starting from zero okay so this is called multiple declaration uh, then let's just create for example uh, output of it so how do we want the output to be there so we're going to write for loop and we're going to say integer um, or we already have integer right so we're going to just say x is equals to zero or x is equals to one depends on how you want to start it because we need natural numbers we want to sum if you want to start zero or less it's up to you so less than equal to 10 because that's what the question asks us to do and then we're going to do something called x plus plus okay block start block close so we have a loop so now basically this loop will iterate 10 times okay same as what we did with the while loop here we had x is equal to zero condition and then it will loop 
So this time again, in, we have an in, initialization statement inside the for loop. We have a condition that if this, again, let me just, sorry, increase the zoom for it so that we can read this better. So now we have integer x is equals to 1, x less than 10, x plus plus. Now inside this, what we need is, first of all, we're going to say, listen, let's just take this sum variable is equals to, I'm going to say sum uh, plus x, semicolon. So remember the our task was that uh, we need to write a C-sharp program to find the sum of first 10 natural numbers. So that means that the first 10 natural numbers are these ones. So we need to add all these natural numbers together with each other. So the first number is going to be printed is going to be print 1. The next number is going to be printed is 2. So 1 plus 2 becomes 3. Then 3 plus 3 becomes 6. And similarly, it's going to add all these numbers together. Okay. So that's what exactly we're doing. So we say, hey, sum starts from 0. So take the current value of sum, which is 0, and add it with the value of x, which will start from 1. So 1 plus 0 becomes 1. So there's where our sum 1 comes into play. Next time in the loop, it iterates. The x sum is now 1, right? x again becomes 2 this time. So 1 plus 2 becomes 3. And the answer is saved in 3. Then again, x becomes 4 now. So 4 plus the value of 3. And then similarly, it goes and it rates itself. Just like we want here. So 1 plus 2, 2 plus 3, 3 plus 4, 4 plus 5. Whatever the answer comes into play, it just keeps on adding to the next value. This is a simple equation to do that. That's it. That's all it's what we required. So now we're going to say, listen, boss, let's just print output console dot write uh, line and then we're going to hit brackets inverted quotations the sum of an at natural number is and then we're going to do plus and natural number plus x in fact let's just move is and you equals semicolon here so we're going to print here everything that we want to basically print okay so this just solves one of our problem finally once this is done outside the loop we're going to print the console dot right line bracket star bracket close uh, sorry semicolon inverted quotations the final uh, final sum is and then we're going to plus the sum value here outside of the loop. Why we need to do that? Because this sum will continuously iterate and add all the numbers together until this condition is satisfied. So once this satisfied, this number will have the final value. Once this number has the final value and the loop exits, now we need that final value of outside of the loop. So we're going to print the value here. So in fact, let's just move this. The natural number x, we're going to hit run. Compilation fail and it says console system dot console uh, does not contain a definition of a right line. Okay, so it's telling us where's the mistake. So we did a spelling mistake. My boo boo. And then here we are. So we have a natural number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the sum is 45. Perfect. So if you want to make sure the first 10 numbers, just use equal to sign here. So now see, this is a sometimes as we call it logical errors. If you want the 10 number to be there, as per our requirement here, that the 10 number should be 10 and the sum should be 55. So that means that we use an E less than sign. Less than means it will be less than 10. So it's running up till 9. Now to get to, to ensure that it runs up till 10, we need the equal to operator. Once you add the equal to operator and run the amount, now you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the natural numbers. And then the final sum is 55. Voila. As simple, as easy as, as it gets. So we select it, come back here, and then we're going to say, oops, I don't want this. Oh, oh, control, this is supposed to be 55. I don't want this. Let me just come here and keep the output here. So we get the output, and now we have the generation. Again, I will do the formatting later on. Let's move on to the next question. Write C sharp program that displays the sum of n natural numbers. Okay. So test data is that, uh, for example, if we give 7. So expected output will be the first seven natural numbers, right? So this time the seven level is there. As simple as that. So we can have, uh, for example, integer n is equals to seven, semicolon. So we use the same program, but this time instead of 10, we're going to use n here. Okay. So n basically means that x is less than or equal to n. So if I set it to 10, this means that x will be less than or equal to 10. 
if I set it to 7, x will be less than or equal to 7. That way, it's going to run this program all along, okay, up till that particular number. So, next program, we just had to change this small thing. And if I run the x code, now it runs 7 times and does the calculation for that. So, this is exactly what we expected here to be. So, if I wanted to run 7 times, it is 7 times. You can even ask for a user input at this matter, okay. So, if you are... Uh, because I'm using an online editor at this point, they do not, I believe, allow us to take online input. Um, uh, but if you if you want to take an input, you can use console dot uh, read line, and then use that method to take input from the user, as we have discussed previously. So whatever the number user gives is basically saved inside this value, and then the loop will run that number of times, printing and adding the sum of that number. Capish, excellent, Tomato. Again, if you want, control C, I copy this code bring it to my word file and now we have the code here uh, control v i get this three programs done very quickly see so if you do more practice that's why i've been saying if you want to learn programming try to practice as many tasks as you can there are many websites that allow you to have these tasks the more tasks you do the better you get okay so for example uh rest is created this one table printer now this is a typical program that we, we, we use with every single system. Let's create a multiplication table very quickly. So again, I create a new page, open up the one compiler, I get rid of everything else. And let's just start with using system. And then this time I'm going to need the namespace again. I'm going to use the same namespace, block star block close. We're going to create class and I'm going to say table block star block close. We're going to have a static okay and then we're going to create something called void means this method is not returning any type bracket star bracket close we create a string data type with an array symbol a variable name block star block close press enter we have this wonderful let's use for loop so we create a for loop inside the for loop we create a variable x is equals to zero okay x less than uh, let's just make it to 12 so it starts from 12 in fact let's not use it from zero multiplication if you multiply anything with zero becomes zero so it just messes up the whole equation so let's just start with one then i give a semicolon here and then an x plus plus okay so now again this means that for loop will loop statements we provide initialization at the first part we provided a condition that when this value of x is less than 12 you execute the loop the moment it becomes 12 bigger than 12 you exit the loop and then we ensured we do x plus plus so it keeps on changes this variable value simple as that beautifully done then let's just use console oops not constant console dot right line bracket star bracket close semicolon inverted quotations now the output we want is something like this it's going to be for example say 5 multiplied by 1 is equals to 5 right so this is the typical way we represent multiplication. So I want exactly the same output. So I'm going to say um, integer uh, number number is equals to 5. So first we need the table or multiplication number that we want to generate. So I have number here. Okay. So I'm going to say, listen boss, first I want this num number because that's my first value. Then I need this multiplication sign. So because this is a number, a variable that I've used here in order to use a variable with a string we add a plus sign inside inverted quotations we use this x okay so this will ensure number x is printed but see this we have given a space here that space is not here so it's going to concatenate and join these two things together so we need that space so we add that space in inside the inverted quotations just to th spread the things out very nicely so it's going to print a number plus join it with this string that has already spaces so this first two characters are printed then we need this value number which is actually coming from the x value so we're going to say listen now join it with x okay so this is going to join it with x so first time the loop executes the value of x is one it's going to come here the number is value five plus this x as a string is printed plus the value of x is printed here then after this we need this equal to sign so again we're going to do the same thing we're going to say listen after this x plus it concatenate it with space equal to space so again we added a plus here so now note there's a two plus after this x 
one before one after so this plus is used to concatenate this string then whatever is the outcome of this entire string is going to concatenate with this thing so now because of this we're going to use this equal to sign this value finally we need the actual answer so for that we're going to say listen plus and then we i will do something called brackets and then i'm going to add number multiply by the value of x okay so why we gave these brackets here we have been talking about this for a long time because we want to ensure the operator precedence this is going to concatenate the string this will ensure that the mathematics is done first this multiplication is done first then it is concatenated at this moment this multi this brackets are not necessary because multiplication has a higher precedence so it will do multiplication first anyway before it's going to concatenate but it's always a good practice to simplify your equations and make it a nice and clean way that's it so to print this string this is what basically it looks like so we need a number so we use a number we need an x in a string form so we concatenated using the plus operator we concatenated that string with this x then after the x we needed one so if i run this code let me check before i talk perfect see this we get a nice beautiful looking output remember these spaces here if i don't give these spaces inside the inverted quotations that i do it for equal to an x now if i run it it works fine but they are quite joined together it's like difficult to read what the hell is going on right so when you give space inside the inverted quotations it makes sense the space outside the inverted quotations doesn't really matter it's inside that matters so now we get a very nice looking multiplication table simply by using a single loop and ensuring that we print the statement in a particular manner so the loop will ensure that the variable starts from 1 if the value of x is less than or equal to 12 execute the body come back here do the increment change the now value of x by 1 again check the condition if the condition is true execute this statement then come back do the increment and repeat the whole goddamn process got it Rapish? and i hope you understand how we have formatted this string to print this nice looking output that's it so we again take this code control c i go back to my page and this is what i expect when i hand over the manuals to my student these are what you're supposed to do solve these equations and make sure they're formatted nicely not what i've done here this is very poorly designed but again copy pasting from internet <clears throat> has that effect so i will create maybe a, probably a style somewhere and then we apply the quick style sphere so that it's formatted nicely and looks properly anyway so this is done and this is multiplication table um, and then various different formats that let's just print a table on one single line if i need to do this okay that print the table on a one single line what do you need to do only one thing needs to be changed just from this right line make the print right method voila and then obviously we need inverted uh, the comma marks that separated so see this there's a comma here that separates everything so for that comma after the multiplication has been done we again do concatenation inverted quotations add a comma and then add a space after it so when i run the code now we have a comma and a space and then again another copy that's all it needs it to do okay so if you understand the basic logic of this you would understand that creating any form of output anyway is very easy right will add a simply output without the new line but when you write the word line it means add the new line inside the code wonderfully done okay so i hope that explains few things let's just do one program more uh, that prints our number in a particular order so this is something that we love to do uh, this one so write a program that prints the triangle in this form okay the sterics in that triangular form or what we call the right angle form how do we now do that okay so for this we basically need nested loops uh, this time I'm going to be a little bit lazy and I'm going to leave everything, delete everything, name this, for example, um, namespace myself that I've been using, Dr. Zishan C sharp, public class, and then instead of a program, I'm going to use uh, tri -R -I -A -N -G -L -E, triangle, everything else needs to be same, let me just delete that, okay, so we're just using the same boilerplate, now, how do we print this aesthetic? pattern how do we print this aesthetic pattern uh, inside this so now note the key thing inside the aesthetic patterns what you need is 
that first time the loop executes, obviously we're going to loop use because it's going to repeat the self. But the first time the loop executes, it needs to just print one static. Next time it executes, it needs to print two static. Next time it executes, now it needs to print three static. Third time, fourth time it executes, it now needs to print four statics. Okay, so that means for this particular purpose, we're going to need something called nested loops. Okay, so to print the nested loops, we're going to do create few variables integer i comma j comma row semicolon okay so i take three variables here bear with me and i will explain the logic much detail in this case so now we're going to say okay once we have that let's just create a for loop inside the for loop we declare this variable i is equals to zero oops zero this one semicolon and we're going to say i less than equal to rows the rows we want okay semicolon and we're gonna hit i plus plus bracket star bracket close the standard for loop this is an outer loop inside this loop we want another loop to execute so we create another for loop and i'm gonna say this variable j is equals to one semicolon j less than equal to i semicolon and then j plus plus block star block close now check so let me do one more thing that i love to do uh end of four or in fact outer four and i'm going to use end of inner four well this will these are just simple comments but what this will tell me that hey this bracket is where the outer for loop ends and this bracket where the inner for loop ends because you can end up having hundreds of lines sometimes uh, it becomes extremely confusing and difficult to debug where the block is starting block is ending okay so leaving these comments will actually help you understand a lot so end of main so i know that the, this is basically end of main method and then i can have end of class and end of namespace if i want it will ensure that our code is more readable we have an outer loop simple as that and then now inside this we create something called console dot right bracket star bracket close semicolon steric and print steric okay so this goes inside the inner loop once this is printed now we come here and we're going to print something called console dot right again and this time we're going to inverted quotations backslash n voila now let me explain the logic to you okay bang bang okay since we need the output in this manner so that means the loop that executes will only need to print the steric one time then it needs to come here this time it needs to print two times so we need a mechanism to re to repeat the loops counter or change the loops counter and increase the counter every time the loop executes for the next time right so the first time it executes the counter is one but now next time it executes it's supposed to execute twice the third time it executes again it's supposed to print three times statement the fourth time it executes it's supposed to print four times so see every time the loop is repeating itself it's actually printing more and more lines so in this case the loop is printing four times and that is why it is going to print maximum four stars so it's repeating one time first time only one star second time two star three third time three star four time four star why four time there because in our code we have told it that the row is there and then this row is going to be the telling us the points how many rows we need so we're going to initialize this row variable to for example four and when you change it it will change it so this will tell us a uh, number of rows to print okay so let me just execute this code to double check and we get the error as always the crap uh, okay so it says the name does not exist okay at this point line 13 the name does not exist rows so if i come here i have a row integer row variable has been declared this variable has been initialized we have talked about this declaration and initialization and at this point line 13 oh i have to sorry my bad uh, this is row row and i named it as rows and that's what it says that's why it says hey this variable is not recognizable once we execute it, voila, it executes. Now let me explain the code again. So what's happening here is that there's an outer loop 
it starts from zero and it says i less than equal to row so basically it it, the outer loop will execute four times because that's supposed to happen so this is where line one line two line three the four rows are coming into play understand capish the logic comes here in this inner loop <coughs> the inner loop again starts with the one and then we say this point here j is less than equal to i this is what creates this variable outputs this means that the for loop will execute only the number of times based on the value of i so the first time this inner loop executes it starts from the one j is less than equal to the value of i what is the value of i so the first time the loop is executing the value of i is actually what yeah zero so this basically means that uh, in fact if we start from one it makes a little bit more sense the zero actually there's a blank line here so if i run it see this it jumped up actually so the first line actually went blank because of my zero so now if i re-execute it sees it's there so zero was okay but zero will just add a blank line because zero is absolutely nothing so if i add a zero again here now you'll note it will jump to the second point if i run it there's a jump right because it added a zero steric line here which we don't want so we just come back here and add a one to it and hopefully that makes much more sense so these are small logical errors that you need to understand and rectify within your code once you are here we say hey i is equals to one i is less than rho so execute four times perfect so then j is equals to one and j is less than equal to i which for the first time this is executing is supposed to be one so that means j also one and less than equal to one condition becomes true console dot write comes here it prints the steric one time then the loop ends okay why the loop ends because then when it goes back here it adds j plus plus one j becomes two and if i come inside here two is less than equal to i which still is one remember we talked about outer and inner loops so outer loop will execute one time the inner loop will complete its entire cycle so in this case the inner loop also is supposed to execute the only amount or the number of times the outer loop has already executed since outer loop is executed for the first time this is only going to also execute one time hence this is one j now becomes two the condition becomes false this block ends the control comes here now we need to add a new line so we use backslash n for this new line so the control comes from this point to this point the second line then control from here goes back to the outer loop it does the increment so i previously was one now becomes two i is less than equal to row condition becomes true it comes back to the inner loop i j is equals to one this variable starts as a fresh reinitializes it now j starts from one the value of i is two this condition becomes true j plus plus will now be executed for the first time so it's going to print the steric again then again it will go here plus plus j becomes two again this condition becomes true because the value of i for the second time is two so it's going to print the variable well again so this is how we print the variable so we are making this inner loop execute the number of times the outer loop is executing so the outer loop has value one the inner loop executes one time the outer value has loop two the inner value executes two time the outer loop has a value three the inner loop executes three time the outer loop has a value four the inner loop executes for the fourth time simple as that beautifully done and this is our code to generate this wonderful little static program understand i paste the code and my task is complete so as a student i would say my submission is done let's just move on to another nested loop example and we say okay if this is the case and i want to print the number called one 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 two three now what should so now let's create this program um similar to that but this time we have a very simple um logic that instead of printing sterics we actually need to print something called one two three now how do we go about doing this okay the logic goes very simply the same so what i do is come back here um if you want let's just copy control c let it be, be a little bit lazy 
create another window of this okay delete the previous code paste it so now again i have a using system namespace same that i've been using class triangle and then this i can for example say triangle underscore or triangle num num right so just change it to num so make sure we have a different class name um, then public static void domain uh, with capital m string there bracket signs so everything basically remains same from the previous programs so we create integer i j and row two variables okay um, if you want you don't need to use this variables here so for example if i remove here and i just create an integer row variable and i declare this rows for example is equals to four on this line which can be perfectly normal and i can do that as well okay so delete this this comment can now go control x and we're here so basically we are saying that listen we need this comment here so once this is uh, integer 4 is there now where did i and j go remember at 4 uh, we can create i is equals to 1 integer and integer j is equals to 1 as well so in previous example that we did uh, we declared i and j as a separate variables above and then used i is equals to 1 inside the for loop so declaration was done here a declaration was done here and initialization was done here again perfectly legal just one more example of how we can use statements inside the for loop or in a typical way we just use integer i is equals to one and j is equals to one as well now remember we are starting with one uh, because we want the numbers to run from the value of one that's it so now what we need is we need to print the value uh, instead of this j we will print the value of for example uh, j that's it so in, instead of steric we have printed the value of j then backslash n will go as it is everything remains same if i run the code now see what i get one two, one two one two three one two three four okay why is that because this time we told it that hey print the value of j so we have an outer loop and then we have an inner loop just like the previous example so inner loop will have j is equals to one j is less than equal to i now again keep an eye on this because because of this we get this pyramid or triangle kind of structure j is less than i means that first time in the loop inner loop executes it will run the only the number of times we have i okay then it will execute based on that similarly uh, if i is one then the inner loop will execute one time so that's why we only get it one time when i becomes two next time then the inner loop will start and run two times based on this condition so we get two times value here then the third time i becomes three it will execute one two three three times okay so this is how we try to execute and ensure that our code runs properly and we get one two uh, one one uh, values whatever we want to basically print with them okay simple as that so now we have another example of how we do these things similarly there are many other examples that you can follow and you can work on uh, to create more accurate patterns so for example if you need one two three four five six all different numbers or want to create this kind of a pyramid shape or create this kind of a steric shape how do we do that so we just use these nested loops but we play with them how we want to do that okay so try to go through these programs i will as i said should be sharing this document as well as soon as i complete it i've been very little bit lazy on that uh, procrastinating too much but as soon as i do i will share this document uh, on the channel and then you can access it um, then probably follow along do as many tasks as you want and only then you can develop the logic don't think these are repetitive tasks the more programs you do the better you get the better you get the logically stronger programmer you become and you will be capable of solving more uh, complex programs because programming is all able to understand how to crack the logic and solve a problem by writing a code okay so to go through that process means you do as many programming tasks as you can even how mini score or simple they may seem but they are very important and they allow you to develop that fundamental logic of solving problems okay excellent so coming back to our code now now this is basically for our loops we completed that and the next let's just move on to again we have talked about break already in switch statement and extensively so i'm just going to move on to arrays okay so that's all folks uh, today we talked about while loop do while loop and for loop we discussed various different things within each of these loops uh, i hope you understand them how the looping statements are and how we use them uh, and then in the end we did these several different um, examples as well to make things more understandable especially with the for loop and nested for loops okay so do try these examples out i will be sharing the document very soon with you as soon as i complete and stop procrastinating on that 
but do leave me a comment and i will see how many of you are actually interested and leave a comment to bother bother to leave a comment uh, needing this document okay um that will motivate me to work more uh, on this so um, don't forget to leave a comment and hopefully see you in next session next session we're going to discuss more about arrays so until next time this is dr shanbhati signing off